Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Little Craft House. Today, I want to share with you this awesome new product. This is Castmanite. We have just started stocking it in our shop, so I thought I'd give you a little how-to tutorial for those of you who are interested in trying it, or maybe some of you already use a similar product and want to pick up a few tips and tricks. So Castmanite is a non-toxic acrylic resin. There are similar products out there on the market, such as Jessamite, which some of you may have already heard of. As a finished item, Castmanite has a similar appearance to concrete, but it is a lot lighter and more user-friendly from a crafting perspective. You can make all sorts of items such as candle vessels, trinket dishes, even jewelry. So join me now as we make some trinket dishes. One of the most important things to note when we're using Castmanite is that the measurements are all done in weight. So even though we're using a powder and a liquid, we're going to weigh it out into a grammage. So Castmanite uses a 2.5 to 1 ratio. So this trinket dish that we're going to make today, I'm going to weigh out 150 grams of powder to 60 grams of liquid. To add some colour, I'm going to use a Castmanite red pigment powder. This one has been formulated especially for the Castmanite, so it gives it a nice vibrant colour. Now usually I would just scoop in the pigment powder and give it a mix in, but um, just to show you today, I'm going to add 5 grams of the powder. This will just give you an idea of how much you need to use and the colour that actually comes out from it. Now I like to measure the liquid in a separate cup. This just means that I don't overfill, don't over pour it in, because um, once the liquid goes into the powder, obviously you can't take any of it back. Okay, so once we add the liquid into the powder, we do have a very quick work time. So it's important to make sure that we get it all stirred and mixed really well without adding too many bubbles in as we stir. So it takes a little bit of practice. Um, yeah, just giving it a really good stir, mixing it all in, scraping down the edges and pretty much just keeping it moving. Once you stop it moving, that's when it's going to start to thicken up. And it then becomes a little bit difficult to move around if you're trying to move it within your mould. Now the benefit of having a clear cup is that you can see through it and you can see if there are any patches that you've missed along the way with your stirring. And so this is the trinket tray mold that I'm going to be using. It's a silicon mold. And I'm just going to give this a one quick last stir and then pour straight in. If you find that you've mixed up too much of the mixture and you've got leftovers, it's handy to have a silicon mat to the side to quickly pour any of those scraps onto. Those scraps along with any of the leftovers in your cup can later be cracked up and used as terrazzo style chips for other projects. Now, much the same as epoxy resin, bubbles are not your friend when it comes to Castmanite. So I go a little bit crazy vibrating and tapping the mould and the table to try and bring any bubbles to the surface. And because work time is so limited with Castmanite, it's important to get the bubbles to the surface as quickly as possible before it sets too much. Once you're happy that all bubbles have been removed, pop the mould to the side and keep it nice and flat until it's cured. Castmanite can be demolded as early as 40 minutes after being poured. It will obviously be very fragile at this stage and depending on the size of your project, it's definitely recommended to leave it longer. I like to leave mine about an hour if I'm doing a dish before demolding it. It will take seven days for a full cure and for it to reach the maximum strength. In the meantime, whilst we're waiting for that one to cure, I'm gonna show you another variation for the dish. This one is creating a marble effect. 
So much the same as before, I'm measuring out my components of powder and liquid, but I'm not adding any of the pigment yet. Instead, I'm going to add the pigment powder to a separate cup and just pop that to the side. This time I'm going to use about half the amount of pigment powder that I used in the first dish because we don't want it to be so full of colour like the first one was. So I'm going to mix the liquid into the powder and get it all nice and stirred up and mix together well before I add any of the pigment powder. When I add the pigment, I just want to give it a gentle stir just to swirl the colour through the carsmonite. And again, I'm just going to tap and bang around the side of the mould and the table just to remove any of those air bubbles. As I mentioned earlier, don't worry about any wastage that you may have left over in your cup. Once this dries and cures, you'll be able to crack it away from the edge of the cup and pop it to the side to be able to use for later projects. I like to keep a little cup to the side that I can put these pieces into. They come in really handy when you want to make terrazzo style pieces or you can crush them down and give more of a granite look to your pieces as well. And this is the silicon mat that I was talking about before as well. This has just got any of the scraps that I've had poured onto it where you can simply just peel up those bits of cosmonite and chip it off and then crush them down to being smaller pieces. This piece here was probably a little bit too thick as I obviously didn't get time to spread it out before it thickened up. But as you can see, there's a few different size pieces there, but they'll be fine to crush down with something more solid to make those granite pieces as well. Okay, so back to our dishes. Now I've left these for about 45 minutes. I probably should leave them longer, but I just want to demold them to be able to show you. So this is the one that we did first with the full red color. Now I'm just gonna be super gentle peeling this off because I don't wanna crack it. And I do apologize for any weird noises in the background, they are my dogs playing. Okay, and now to our marble dish. I absolutely love the effect that is on the top of this. Um, unfortunately, that's going to be the bottom of the dish, but I just think it looks so good. Generally, what happens on the other side is not quite as detailed, which no, it's not, but it's still really beautiful. I love that really swirly look. Now, I could have got a skewer or some sort of blunt instrument and swirled a little bit more after I poured it, but I just wanted to give it a more sort of organic look this time. And so to finish these pieces off, I'm just going to give them a light sand with a really fine grit sandpaper and then I'll give them a coat of Carsmanite sealer. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have had so much fun creating with this product. If you would like to try it for yourself, we now have it available in our store. I'll pop a link up in the description box. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.